Welcome to On the Edge with April Mahoney Brains. Here, this is the spot where the conversations are pointed, the guests are sharp, and the responses are never dull. Did you bring your thinking caps? Because it's time to put them on. Because the conversation starts. Turn and burn. Here go. on the edge. <laughs> Brains. I need some funky music in the background. I'm gonna give me some more music because uh you know, I need to spice it up. That's what we're gonna there do. Go. Okay? <laughs> yeah. We're gonna spice it up like cayenne pepper <laughs> with my guest today, Susan Gibson. Uh it's a different kind of vibe. You know, I talk to energy healers and everybody's got a different frequency brain, so don't think they're all the same. You know, we're not all going to tune in the same way, but she tunes in and gets you tuned up to really, you know, what do you want in life? Are you happy where you are? Really? Nobody's ever content. Uh, They're always chasing that happiness high. She's going to show us how to get more grounded, you know, Mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, just let the bottom out because brains, we are just like, teetering back and forth on anxiety and depression and finance and relationship. Every part of your life brains cannot be chaos. Am I right, Susan? That is absolutely correct. Okay. And sometimes it is, though. And then what do you do? Right. But, you know, come on, brains. You can... You, you, I know it's hard. You got to pull up at your bootstraps. I get it. Put your big girl and big boy panties on. But there's always an opportunity. There's always hope. There's always imagination. There is always, and you can change. You don't have to change the next day. You can change the very next second. If you're a drug addict, for example, and you just hit rock bottom, and you say that's it, in a twinkling of an eye. So don't give me this long, drawn-out process of why you've been in a certain situation for the last 20 years. You better get yourself together. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay. But how do you feel, Susan? Sometimes sometimes people have that intention. They want to do that and their body's not allowing them to. Hmm. Especially if they hold trauma. And not just big T trauma, but little T trauma. I think we all have those. And what do you do then, right? But that's your body talking to you. When things are not going well in your life, in a particular area or in many areas, you know, we call that dis-ease. Right. And dis-ease, if we don't start listening to what our body is saying, will turn into disease. Mm -hmm. Well, it makes me dizzy either one. Uh, it's a yeah. lot going on. How did you find the space of being an energy healer or how yeah. did it find you? Yeah, it found me. I, I originally went to school to be a civil engineer, mm. realized three and a half years into the five-year program that it wasn't for me, Met my husband got married, moved all over the country and ended up starting a custom window treatment business that I owned for 17 years. And at 42, I started looking at my life going, man, this is not what I wanted. I was, I had depression. I had anxiety. Anxiety went to the point of panic attacks where I thought I was having a heart attack. And I was drinking a bottle of wine a night just to cope. What? Ugh. Yeah, girl. It was good. Red or white? What was you drinking, girl? Red. Mm. Yeah, good red wine. Mm -hmm. And just I was so numb I was at the point that I was I was like I, I certainly don't love myself I don't know do I love anybody I don't even know if I love my kids and that was an eye-opener when when you become that numb where you don't even know if you love your kids mm. that says there's a problem and I started to do my work and part of that work was I went to an energy healer I wasn't sure if I understood what that was if I believed in it but I thought at this point, okay, I'm so, willing to give right, so anything me, a try. Well, no, well, tell me, what was your first encounter? I mean, you know, did somebody introduce you? Did you find them on Google? 
a mm-hmm. Facebook ad? How did you, how were you drawn to this person that you let get in your space? My cousin-in-law. Cousin-in-law. Uh, okay. Cousin-in-law. So my, my husband and her husband were cousins. Mm-hmm. Are, well, they still are. We're just not related anymore. Okay. <laughs> And she said, why don't you go see my friend, Jen? She's an energy healer. And so I said, okay, I will give this a try. If I don't like it, I don't have to go back. Right. And had the most incredible experience of my life. I could feel things coming out physically out up and out of my mouth. Mm. And at the end, I had a sense of peace that I have never had before in my life. Really? Yes. Mm, mm, mm. So what did your man say when you came back home all renewed and bright eyed and bushy tailed? Could he tell the difference? Well, he thought I was a bit crazy. He thought yoga was crazy though. So, mm. so he, it, yes. if he squares a pool table and just as green, he don't know what's going on. He didn't know <laughs> what was going on. Well, he very religious, you know, very oh. Catholic. And so he had real questions about the stuff that I was doing. Okay. Now, are you married to the same man now? No, I am not. Okay. All right. Yeah. You know, because it can be a conflict of interest now. You come in talking some hoo-hoo energy that's not written in text. So, you know, I I get it. I get it. But you still forged ahead. I did. You still found that this was valuable for you. And at the end of the day, baby, it's about you. And it's not about him. Absolutely. We're, you know, we're evenly yoked, right? But sometimes we can agree to disagree and dissolve. Yes. And, you know, I was taking care of me. He was used to me taking care of him and taking care of everything else. And once I started taking care of myself, he had no long, he no longer had power over me. Mm. And I, I, didn't allow him to have power over me. I felt stronger within myself. I understood why all of those things had come to be in my life. I had been avoiding looking at things in my past. Um, I had been raped when I was 16 Ouch. by my boyfriend. And then when I was 18, I, I was date raped uh, a second time by someone else. And I just kind of took those things, wrapped them up in a box and put them on the shelf. Like, this doesn't determine who I am. This doesn't define who I am. I'm not a victim. Moving on. But all of those feelings still remained pushed down within my body, within my whole energy system. So as I started looking at that and feeling it and allowing myself to go back to that space, Mm -hmm. I was able to heal it and release it. But you kept reliving the trauma. See, you know, there's different philosophies on this now. You know, I've got people that get you right up to that point and have you reframe it. Uh, There's hypnotherapists that try to help you suppress it completely or, you know, it's all kind of different modalities. So, Brains, I say this to you. Try something. Try something. And you don't know until you know. And just like Susan said, if it's not for you, you don't have to go back. There you go. You know, but fear will hold you and bind you and gag you. You won't have a voice. You don't have a presence. You don't, you can't find your joy. You can't find your center, much less an energy worker. Because you're dealing with the kids and your man and your old home self self esteem, but you know you have to work through that anxiety. I had an anxiety attack. I had never had one before. You know it's a meltdown. Mm -hmm. And if you're having them on a regular basis and a bottle of wine, it could go from a flicker to a flame real easy. (laughs) (laughs) That's so true. So what do you tell that woman? How does she calm down? Well, if, especially you've had trauma, uh, it's very likely that you don't feel safe. If you don't feel safe, you don't feel grounded. You've pulled your energy up away from the earth. And that's what's coming out as the, the panic attacks. Because energy is not 
uh, created or destroyed. Law thermodynamics, it's only transformed. So where does that energy go when you don't feel safe to be on this planet, right? You pull that energy up, it's gonna go to your stomach area and you're gonna have uh, issues with like constipation, diarrhea, IBS symptoms. It's gonna come up to your heart area where you're gonna have that pounding of the heart where you feel like you're having a heart attack, or it's gonna show up in your head area. And it's that's gonna look like circular thinking, those thoughts that you can't turn off that just keep going over and over and over again. And that's the kind of thing that you're, you're gonna be waking up in the middle of the night and not being able to go back to sleep again. Okay, so she realizes this, where, where does she begin? Yes. You know, how do you how do you seek out somebody that's in the light? There's a lot of hocus pocus alamocus out there too. Now let's keep it one hundred. There yes, there is. And you know, the the thing about me is that I am an energy healer, but I'm a very, very grounded energy healer. And I I bring a lot of other things to the table with that. My scientific background, right? I can actually work with clients all over the world and do. So we can do this over Zoom, um, or if you're in the Cincinnati area, we could do it in person. Um, there, are, I went to the school of uh, Barbara Brennan School of Healing. Mm. That's where I started. It's a four-year school for energy healers. You can get, uh, you can earn a Bachelor of Science. It's the only place in the world you can earn a Bachelor of Science in energy healing. And Barbara <laughs> Brennan. I'm hmm? sorry, I mean, is this muscle testing also? Uh, no, um, it's, it's actually tapping into your high sense perception. We wow. start out using a pendulum really, to connect with our truth. And then they teach you how to connect more into your high sense perception rather than just using your eyeballs. Okay. Take me back. How old yes. is this modality? Well, healing has been around for since the beginning of time, right? Right. Um, I, I started out with healing touch, did three levels of that, decided I wanted to go very in depth, went to the Barbara Brennan school for four years, came back two more years of healing touch and uh, also Reiki. So I've covered them all. I want to know what the differences are, what the similarities are and add just more tools to my toolbox. Exactly. Now, two things. One is give me a success story. Tell me somebody that, you know, you know, they, you turn them from a flicker to a flame. They're just yeah at their goodness now. I had a client recently um, who came in and uh, she was actually referred to me because the other practitioner thought that she had an entity attached to her. And what when, mean, what do you mean an entity? A spirit. Really? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Are you just going to do battle with a spirit? Oh, it wouldn't wouldn't have been the first time. <laughs> wow. Okay, keep talking. It's getting good. Now. Yes. <laughs> All right, go ahead. But she didn't have one. She just had an awful lot of anxiety. And uh, I did a technique on her that actually spirit uh, has taught me in the last three months. And the next time she came in, she said, I don't know what you did, but uh, I feel completely different and it's lasting. And she came that second time and that was it. She really didn't need to come back to see me. Well, you know, that first husband is going to say, now, look, she didn't performed an exorcism. <laughs> But anyway, that you can get the demons out because brains, demons are real. They are walking yeah. among us just like the angels. Are you kidding me? And if you don't believe it, we've been fighting an invisible devil. I know for the last two and a half years called COVID. Okay. Mm. So don't tell me that it's not real and it moves in the air in the spirit. You can't necessarily see it or touch it or taste it, but you're impacted by it. Mm. And that subconscious mind how do you ground yourself? Because see, you're doing some heavy lifting when you, you're doing that. What do you do to, you know, keep yourself whole and sane? I think that I do a couple different things. I think I work on it every single day. Mm. Uh, I think that's really important. I notice 
within my own energy system when I'm becoming ungrounded, when I don't feel safe. And then one of the ways that I teach my clients to ground, which is very easy, it's uh, very physical. I'm, I'm not much for the imagine you have roots growing out of your feet trick. Okay. I just want to go to how big am I as a tree? Mm, <laughs> and, right. So if you can get a flatter rock that's smooth, like a river rock, okay. and stand on it. Stand on it. If this is your foot, stand, stand on it uh, up at the top, in the middle, and then at the heel. And what happens is that it's actually like acupressure. That rock digs into your foot, and it starts to release the fascia. And your wherever your attention is going is where your energy is going to flow. Mm. So it's kind of hard not to have your attention on your foot when you're digging into it with a rock. Okay. Right? So five minutes, both feet total, and you will be more grounded. Really? Yes. All right. Well, I got some river rocks in the back, and I'm going to try it, Brains. I'm going to report back. <laughs> now, you know I'm going to report back. Uh, my guests have turned me on to some of the most incredible things. I'm a tree hugger. Oh, my God. I got that meditation down. I'm an emotional freedom technique tapper. I love mm -hmm. that. Uh, I do, um, you know, I'm, I should be doing more yoga, but I do breath work. I got turned on the singing bowls. I mean, I'm telling you, you guys on the edge are absolutely the best. So let's ask you some fun questions, Susan Gibson. Yes. Okay. <laughs> if you were an appliance in the kitchen, which one would you be? Probably the coffee maker because I, I drink too much coffee and it's so delicious. Okay. What's your favorite color? Purple. Why? Uh, I feel very connected to everything when I'm around that color. Yeah. Royalty, regal. Ro mm. Transformative. Mm -hmm. I had a meditation one time and I had seen so many colors of purple, colors that I had never seen before. I can't even describe. It's crazy. Yeah. It's the color of the, of that seventh chakra. Yeah, it's just, you know, that's my favorite place to land. I'm always up in that, up in that space. <laughs> so uh, what are three things that you just cannot live without? Susan. Coffee. <laughs> Coffee's one of them, right? <laughs> my husband will tell you that too. My husband. Okay. My family. You know, it's, it's all about connection for me. Okay. Um friends. It's really, everything is about people. Yeah. I, I can do without, you know, the finer creature comforts. I don't really care about my car. It's a, it's something to get from here to there. Right. But, uh, that connection is everything. Okay. What brings you to tears? Mm. Seeing people suffer. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. Emotional what, suffering. What makes you laugh? <laughs> Me. Uh, <laughs> so <laughs> much. <laughs> My husband would tell you, I make me laugh. Yes. He thinks I'm so, he says, I find myself so funny. And he actually laughs too, because of how funny I find myself. That, you know what? <laughs> I'm going to have a lady on my show, a guest on my show, that's going to teach us how to do laugh yoga. Have you ever done that? Yes. It's amazing. Really? Yes. Okay. I'm going to have to try that. I'm excited about that. So that, that's something else new. Um, what do you want your legacy to be, Susan? Hmm. You know, I would like my legacy, um, to be that I was not only there for people, but I was there for myself, that I taught people all the tools that I've learned over the years. Because I think if you've gone through suffering, you've come out the other side. If you don't reach a hand back down to other people who are suffering, then it was kind of a waste. Yeah, to who much is given, much is required. And before we close, Amen. you know, we didn't touch on this very much, but 
you know, you work with women that have been sexually assaulted or traumatized. Um, again, you can't, you can't rewrite that wrong. No, you can't. And you can't be the victim. I mean, well, you are the victim of a predator, uh, but you don't have to be that your entire life. And it doesn't have to be your calling card. Mm -hmm. When you introduce yourself, hi, you know, I'm Betty, victim, blah, 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 of whatever, you know, situation I'm in. Right. So you are more than your circumstance, brains. We all have something. Everybody. Right? Everybody got Everybody. Some drama. And the thing is, if you don't have drama, you better check your history because that's that epigenetics, that generational, your grandmama's mama's mama stuff. You still carry it. Unresolved. Mm -hmm. Unresolved yes. issues. So you need to work with someone that can really kind of, you know, get you uh, going again. And that's Susan Gibson. Thank you so much. You have been the best. I appreciate you. your value. You tell my brains how to get in contact with you so they can get plugged in, juiced up. <laughs> well, you can always find me on Facebook, Your Path to Peace. Um, send me a message there. If you are interested in looking at the possibility of working together, I offer a free 30-minute consult at bit.ly, B-I-T dot L-Y slash thrive with Susan. All right. Well, we got that. We're going to put that on the back of the interview because we can't miss it. Brazen, you know what? You have an assignment. Okay. You have homework. I want you to ask yourself some of the questions that I asked Susan. <laughs> what employees <laughs> are you? Okay. Uh, I think I'm the refrigerator because I just want to chill. <laughs> <laughs> Right here on the edge, brain is the place where the conversations point at the guests are sharp. There she is right there, and the responses are never dull. I need you to go in and handle your business. Like, love, share, and subscribe. Please. Okay. It's not rocket science. And if you love me like you show me that you do with these numbers, I need to have like six four six point four billion people. <laughs> No, but seriously, I need you to go in, like, love, share, share this information, uh, you know, turn up your frequency. She has a gift. She's willing to share it with you, you know, and uh, if you're ready for it, though, you got to be ready for it because it's it's different and you got to be serious. OK, and I'm serious about you, Susan Gibson. You're the best. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right. Bye, brains. <laughs>